Hi, my friends. How are you doing? I miss you all. Uh, here today, we are going to talk about the Steppe Pyramid. Uh, previously, we talked about Saqqara as an area. And today, we are going to continue the second part of Saqqara, which will be about the Steppe Pyramid complex of King Zusur. Before we start, I would like to remind you to subscribe into the channel. And once we reach 5,000 subscribers, we are going to have a free promotion for the one who most viewed or watched the videos, liked and shared them. Are you ready now for our tour to the complex of the step pyramid? Not immediately apparent to the visitor, but the step pyramid complex was completely surrounded by a huge trench that had been hacked into the bedrock. It is about 40 meters across and runs for well over two kilometers in length. At the southern end of the enclosure, that ends overlap creating an office approach to the site that emerges close to the southeast corner of the enclosure wall right by the only entrance whatever else it was the great trench was almost certainly a source of building material for the pyramid complex otherwise one would have to assume that all of the spoil was removed from the site However, archaeological investigation of the southern part of the trench has revealed that the inner faces were carved into niches, which would have been completely unnecessary if it were merely a quarry, pointing to the similarity between the location of the trench and for the subsidiary graves that surround the first dynasty tombs at Abydos. The archaeologists Nabil Siwelam suggests that the niches were where the spirits of royal returners emerged to serve their dead master in the afterlife. All the complex of the steep pyramid surrounded by an imposed wall of limestone with the characteristic palace facade motive and decorated with 14 closed dome doors, that wall estimated 11 meters high and 545 meters from the north to south and 279 meters from east to west and it covers an area over 15 hectares however there is evidence that the original plan was for a much smaller version within the walls was a very a variety of different buildings and open spaces used for the performance of the ritual of kingship all of the action took place on the spiritual plan, so models could fill in for actual buildings. The structures are so-called domi buildings, which were little more than a facade and four walls filled with rubble. The stone walls which surrounded the site were about 10 meters high and were designed to mimic the mud brick walls of the royal palace, the so-called white walls with its niches and buttress facade the same sort of patterns can also be found on the funerary enclosures of the early dynastic kings at abydos as well as the contemporary mastabas that lay only few hundred meters away at saqqara itself so closely did the builders follow the old practices that they carved niches out of masonry after they were laid simple enough to do with mud bricks. Towers projected at 4 meters intervals on 1.6 kilometers circuit and there were no less than 15 gateways guarded by massive flanking towers. 
all but one of them was false. However, and the only actual entrance was at the southeastern corner. In the Egyptian funerary traditions, false doors were the spirits of the dead, rose to receive the offerings of their descendants. The actual entrance of the complex with its eminence projecting tower is much more imposing than the fake versions. Although the doorway itself is rather unprepossessing, it leads through an antechamber and a pair of stone imitation doors flung wide open. Bound was a long passageway lined with 20 pairs of attached columns carved with flutes in imitation of the reed bandels used in traditional architecture. The ceiling was also carved to mimic wooden logs. The columns were made up of a series of drums and originally reached a height of nearly 6 meters. They weren't freestanding but were attached to the side of the corridor by short walls, reflecting a certain lack of confidence on the part of the builders in the new medium. Archaeologists believe that the alcoves thus created contained statues of the pharaoh perhaps one for each of the gnomes of Upper and Lower Egypt. Traditionally, there were 42 of these administrative units, 22 in Upper Egypt and 20 in the Delta, and there are 42 alcoves in the entrance passage. However, four of these lead to other passages and statues would make things a little awkward. An archaeologist called Laur suggests that there were fewer gnomes at the beginning of the Old Kingdom, and that may well be true. The inscribed base of the statue of Zeuser was found, but not in situation. At the end was a smaller transverse vestibule with four bears of reed bundle columns joined together to support the ceiling. The columns were about a meter shorter than those in the passage. Its only practical function was probably to give some space for the funeral procession to reorganize itself before it emerged into the great court through a stone door that stood permanently open. And this entrance was restored with the original blocks which were found laying nearby in the sand, it leads through the narrow passage roofed with a stone fashion to imitate the palm logs and ends in the antechamber, then to the hall of the colonnades. While the courtyard itself, or the great court, or the south court, was a huge area measuring around 187 on 108 meters and was enclosed by ballast facade. This court covers an area of 15,000 square meters that lies between the steep pyramid in the north and the southern wing of the perimeter wall in the south. It might be or probably replicates the area in the complex of the royal palace where the pharaoh would display himself to his people, receive the tribute of foreign lands, it, and etc. Against the south side of the pyramid was a throne geese, its being at left, approached by a ramp or a set of stairs. At the base of the ramp, more or less in front of it, and near the center of the courtyard, were two pairs of horseshoe-shaped structure, or the capital letter B. Set about 60 meters apart, this architectural arrangement is depicted on a number of objects from the early dynastic period, including a mass head belonging to King Narmer, the founder of the first dynasty and the unifier of Egypt, and it was found in the main deposit at Heraclopolis, and also an ebony label for a jar of oil recovered from the tomb of Den at Abydos. The scene is thought to represent an episode in the Hepsid. This was a ceremony that was held in the 30th year of the Pharaoh. These two low limestone buildings, 
they were for rituals to be performed, once as a king of Upper Egypt and the other as a king of Lower Egypt. The plan that resembles that the capital letter B, which reminds us of the half moon shape, they have been associated with the king's symbolic royal circumambulations of his palace during the Heb said festival. Also, there is a present a resistance notion of the royal sacrifice in the early kingship, particularly African kingship. The belief existed that the right order of the world was directly related to the physical process of the king, his sexual botanicity, his strength, and his valor. When this began to win, he was sacrificed and younger, more vital candidate was put in his place. One way of demonstrating whether or not a person was fit to rule was through contests. Perhaps duels to the death and may the best man win. There is certainly enough literary evidence to support that notion. If that had once been the case, it was certainly not by the time of the Egyptian civilization had begun. But perhaps there were other demonstrations of reality, such as beating the boundaries of the land or sacrificing to all of the gods of the land that served in its place. By the dynastic period, these activities had been gathered into a single location. Adjusting to the royal palace, where temporary structures were set up in large open space. Evidently, Zusser considered it important that he, his uh, ka, the kind of guardian spirit, should be able to perform, uh, to perform these uh, same rites in the afterlife. On Den's label, He's shown twice, once sitting on his raised days, wearing a tight-fitting mantle, similar to what Zosar is wearing in the statue from the Serdab, and which was in the Egyptian museum. He's gazing out onto an open space, where another version himself, wearing the traditional kilt, is seen striding, or lobbing, or dancing between two sets of semicircular structures just like those in the courtyard. In the southwestern corner was a dummy building known as the Token Palace. It is pretty much the first thing that catches your eye when you emerge from the entrance passage. It probably represents the temporary pavilion set up for the pharaoh to rest and refresh himself at certain points in the rituals, which were undoubtedly long and tiring especially under the first Egyptian sun. The exterior was decorated with a facade that mimicked reed matting and was topped by a frieze of cobras with their hoods flared, poisoned to strike. This was the cobras, the symbol of Wajit, the great goddess of the delta city of Bhutu, the patroness and the protector of the pharaoh. The same image is part of the royal head girl, where she sits on his forehead, poised to strike out at his enemies. The building is almost all solid masonry, but an entrance on the north side leads into a small room, which the archaeologists believe once held a statue of the pharaoh. On the other hand, think that it was used to house the crowns of Upper and Lower Egypt. Also, there is a deep shaft of a 32 meters deep leading to another tomb chamber. The substructure of the south tomb is entered through an ascending tunnel-like corridor with a staircase. After 30 meters approximately, there is inclined shaft opens at whose end is a period chamber of pink granite. The chamber is a slightly smaller copy of the tomb under the step pyramid itself. Here, as well, are bluish green fine styles and three false doors made of limestone. However, 
The king was represented only once, walking with a white crown on his head and the second in a relaxed pose, wearing the red crown of Lower Egypt. The burial, uh, the burial chamber of, uh, of the pyramids was at the bottom of vertical shafts, the same dimension as the one under the pyramid and on more or less the same north-south axis. It was made out of the same pink granite and there is even evidence for an earlier limestone version with the stars carved into the ceiling. The interior of the tomb was far less disturbed by robbers than the step pyramid and the chamber has survived reasonably intact. Even the beam used to lower the granite block was still in place. The walls were of limestone and the ceiling had been carved in imitation of barn logs. Secondary tombs can be found at some but by no means. All Old Kingdom pyramids in some cases they are thought to belong to the first principal wives. At Giza, rows of three satellite pyramids were set beside those of both Khofu and Minkaura, or the first and the third pyramids. Although no positive identification of the occupants is possible, one of them did contain the remain of a young woman. However, the burial chamber of the south tomb is very small probably too small for an adult woman and her coffin. Various stories have been purposed for its function, to house the royal Blackenta that had been preserved since the pharaoh's birth, to contain his internal organs, lungs, stomachs, intestines, and liver, that removed during the mummification process, or to serve as rebusori for the two crowns of Upper and Lower Egypt. Archaeologists believe that it was a cenotaph meant to replace the royal tomb at Abydos. The most popular story is that they were the tombs of the pharaoh's cup, represented in the form of a statue. And is in a, this statue was in a wooden shrine containing the cast statue and in, this, in his shrine, and the arms reaching upwards on the top of his head as the hieroglyphics of Ka. At other sites, such as the Bent Pyramid of Senefro at the shore or Kefrin at Giza, there is a solidarity pyramid to the south of the main one. In both of these cases, the subsidiary pyramid seems ill adapted as a tomb, the burial chamber in the one at the shore is far too small and non-existent at Giza. Instead, there was a simple niche containing a wooden box with what appears to be chopped up pieces of portable shrine for the transportation of the statue. This offers a good deal of support to the story that the structure was a tomb for the cop. While in Saqqara, or in the south tomb at Saqqara, a descending corridor led down to the tomb, although from the west rather than the north. As was the case with the step pyramid, about halfway down was a rectangular gallery about 30 meters long, filled with pottery and stone jars. On the top of them was a wooden stretcher, a wooden box, and a set of poles from a canopy still bearing traces of gold leaf. Archaeologists assumed that stretcher was used to carry the weasels into the tomb and then simply left behind, but given the other equipment found, transportation of a statue seems a little more complicated. In addition to the great court of the steep pyramid, there, is, there was another important ceremonial area connected with the king's ubili, located within the complex. Part of the ritual included ceremonies at the chapels of the gods of both Upper and Lower Egypt, and the double coronation of the pharaoh. The actual events took place in an open area next to the palace, where temporary reed structures would have been set up. Perhaps there 
had been uh, a time when the pharaoh visited the major temples of the gods throughout the country but by historic times it had become the practice for the gods to meet the pharaoh on his terms at the royal capital access was via long passage that runs after a dog leg straight north from the entrance passage to enter the court at the southeastern corner at that point there is another opinion for immediately to the left is the entrance to building or to a building of unknown function some corridors and rooms have been explored but there is no published information about them the area between the entrance passage and the Hepset core was filled with rubble and it is not known whether there is more of this building or not but excavation are still running the courtyard itself is about 95 meters long and 18 meters across with the main focus on a low platform at the southern end two sets of steps led up to a double throne Yes, where Zusarka, perhaps represented by a pair of statues, was enthroned or enthroned as ruler of Upper and Lower Egypt. Such platforms are frequently depicted in Egyptian art and the double throne, with two kazakhs back to back. Is the hieroglyphic for Hepset? The illustration that you can see now shows its on the handle of an alabaster jar found in one of the galleries underneath the step pyramid. The long side of the courtyard were lined with domed shovels blocks of almost solid masonry. The ones of the west side were mainly typical of Upper Egypt, while those on the opposite side were characteristic of the delta. In front of each chapel was a small core, divided into two complements by a screen wall that created a bent access approach. Entry to the forecourt was through a stone door, complete with carved hangs and pivots that stood permanently open. Along the side walls of the inner part uh, of the courtyard were carved versions of wooden fences shown in contemporary depictions of these types of the shrines. The Hepsed or uh, the Yubili festival was one of the oldest religious festivals in the history of humanity. During the 25th or the 30th year of the Pharaoh reign, the ceremony of Hepsed took place and was to all extent and purposes of Yubili when the sovereignty of the ruler was again recognized and confirmed. The ceremony which began during the first dynasty is frequently portrayed in wall paintings and it has therefore been possible to reconstruct the event. It was celebrated on the first day of the month of Taipei during the season when the crops were sown and was originally held in a series of structures made of leaves, papyrus, and lotus shoots. The pharaoh Zusser decided that the event should be more important and had a stone building, and therefore permanent buildings made to accommodate it. The festival began with a great procession led by a high priest and was celebrated in the various chapels situated around the courtyard. Once the gods had given their consent, to the pharaoh's virtual uh, suitability, he had then to demonstrate his physical suitability by undergoing tests that could vary from one subversion to another. These tests may have been a bullfight or shooting arrows to the four cardinal points, but the most common was a race running along a course indicated on the ground of the court around the house of the north and the house of the south. At the end of the race, the pharaoh was crowned with a double crown for a new reed. The massive step pyramid itself rises in six unequal stages to a height of 204 feet, about 60 meters, and of course is a very conspicuous 
feature in the Saqqara landscape. It was the tomb of King Zusar, first king of the Third Dynasty, who lived about 2780 BC. It is probably the earliest stone building of importance erected in Egypt and maybe the whole world. The king's burial of Zusar used the stones only on their multiplex tombs for lintels their holes, door jams, floors, and protection. Zusser, with the help of his genius architect Imhotep, was the first among the pharaohs to construct a limestone pyramid with a limestone funerary complex surrounded by an enclosure of fine limestone. Historians have determined that the limestone came from Guariz across the Nile River and was remarkably built here to Saqqara. Th this was about the steel pyramid complex of Saqqara and in the next video we are going to talk about the unknown or the not famous the not famous monuments in Saqqara including the buried, the buried pyramid and other uh, other pyramids complexes that we are going to talk about in the next video. Uh, stay tuned for uh, more treasures of Egypt and experience Egypt and feel like royalty with Khaled. Before we go, I would like to remind you once more to subscribe to the channel, like uh, the video, and also all of the social media links, Facebook page, Blogspot, and Twitter. You are going to find all the links in the description. I wish you all the best till we meet again. Goodbye. <music>